In this video, we'll use the microwave spectrum of a diatomic molecule to derive what the bond length of the molecule is. So before we get going, just take note, it is virtually guaranteed that you'll either have this exact problem style on a homework, on a test, on an exam. This is a favorite kind of question to ask from the rigid rotor chapter. So be sure you know how to do this kind of problem at least. And you may in fact get this exact example of carbon monoxide. If not this one, then HCl or HBr are extremely likely candidates for computing uh, this problem. Okay, so we have our rigid rotor example as we have had for the previous two videos. Two atoms of mass one and mass two at a fixed bond length of R. Reduced mass is mass one times mass two over mass one plus mass two. Moment of inertia, resistance to angular acceleration, is equal to reduced mass times bond length squared. Our energy uh, is a function of our quantum number j, which starts at zero, goes up to infinity, and can only take on integer values, zero, one, two, three, etc. Equals h bar squared over two i times j times j plus one, which is also h times b, our rotational constant in hertz, times j times j plus one, which is also h times the speed of light in centimeters per second, times b bar, our rotational constant in wave numbers, times j times j plus one. b, the rotational constant, equals h over eight pi squared times i, which is h over eight pi squared mu r squared. b bar is b over c, speed of light in centimeters per second, equals h over 8 pi squared c times i, or h over 8 pi squared c mu r squared. So our selection rule for microwave spectroscopy was that we go up or down one quantum in energy for our quantum number. This is, so our, we're either going to absorb a photon plus one or emit a photon minus one. Delta E is equal to E of J plus one minus E of J which is equal to h nu, the frequency of our photon, or hc omega, the inverse wavelength of our photon. So omega, our inverse wave wavelength of our photon, is equal to 2 b bar times j plus 1 in units of wave numbers, 1 over centimeters. Okay, and we can also see that the difference in energy between any subsequent peak, so each of these there will be an absorption every uh, two b bar. So j plus one goes from one, two, three, etc. So times two b bar. So omega over b bar is going to give us a spectrum of evenly spaced lines at two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve times b bar. So the difference between any two peaks in the spectrum is going to equal two b bar. So if we can get a vibrational spectrum or sorry, a microwave spectrum of this rotation, we can figure out what B bar is from the difference in these two peaks. So as I said there, delta omega, difference between two subsequent absorption peaks, is equal to omega of j plus one to omega of j plus two minus omega of j to j plus one. So that's equal to two B bar times j plus two minus two B bar times j plus one which says that delta omega, the difference between two peaks in our microwave spectrum, is equal to two b bar, which is equal to two times this, which is h over four pi squared c, speed of light in centimeters per second, mu r squared. So we can refactor this equation for the value of our bond length, r, and what we do when we get that is r equals the square root of h over eight pi squared C mu B. So let's say we have the molecule carbon and monoxide, carbon 12 and oxygen 16. So pay attention also to the isotopes that you're using. Let's say that the difference between two peaks on our spectrum here is 3.8626 wave numbers. So that means B bar is half of that, or B bar is 1.9313 wave numbers. So our reduced mass is the product of our masses divided by their sum. In atomic mass units, that's 12 times 16 over 12 plus 16, or 6.857 atomic mass units. 
converting atomic mass units into kilograms for whatever the mass, 1 12th of the mass of carbon 12 is, we get 1.13865 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. So now that we have b bar and we have mu, we have everything we need to substitute into this expression to get our bond length. So our bond length r of carbon monoxide equals square root of Planck's constant 6.62607 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds, 8 pi squared times 2.99792 times 10 to the 10th centimeters per second. Notice that I'm always using C in centimeters per second because I have values that are in wave numbers. Times 1.13865 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms times 1.9313 wave numbers. So this cancels with that. This cancels, well actually that collides with that. The units work out such that you will get a result here that is in meters. So once you get that result, if you convert that to angstroms, one angstrom being 10 to the minus 10 meters, you'll find that the bond length of carbon monoxide is equal to 1.128 angstroms from this spectrum. So the thing to note about this is that this is actually an extremely accurate value. This is correct to four significant figures. So microwave spectroscopy was actually one of the great ways to infer structural information about molecules before we had nicer tools like x-ray crystallography, NMR, or certain other kinds of things. Microwave spectroscopy was a great way to determine the bond lengths of molecules and was able to get us extremely accurate values for these bond lengths in the absence of other more direct modern tools.